What I liked about older record shops, or specifically, um, I used to go to dance music specialist record shops, um, was that it was how you found out about new music before the internet. I used to rely on a couple of record shop staff and owners to um, to feed me good tunes when I was working as a DJ, and then around that time, the the internet started kicking off, and um, and then I found out about music like any good normal sensible person did from blogs before blogs existed, things like that. I, I, I always got really frustrated with record shops, uh, by and large, because I was listening to heavy metal, and I, you had an option of about six albums, most of which I already had. What I liked about record shops back in the day was, very often I would go in not really knowing much about most of the music I was finding in the racks and quite often I bought albums just on the cover because it looks interesting and I don't think I ever ever bought something that way that turned out to be rubbish so maybe you can't judge a book by the cover but I think you pretty much can judge albums by the cover. What's bad about record shops then was that obviously you relied on the taste of a few people in the shop um, and if you didn't live in London or a big city, uh, you relied on that red shop. So I lived in North Wales and I used to travel for uh, 45 minutes by train to Chester to the closest decent record shop. And, and then I relied on Phil, uh, Fat Phil Cooper, who's still DJ, um, to tell me what good music was on. Uh, other than extremely small specialist record shops, I always found the whole thing a bit disappointing, really, because they never had anything that I wanted. Yeah, there was a there was an opportunity in in the old music world for artists to uh, create artwork that was big enough, uh, just size-wise, on, on an album cover or particularly on a gate sleeve cover, where you, you just had the space to, to do something uh, awe-inspiring, um, which got obviously harder to do when CDs came out. And these days with MP3s or digital downloads, you've got a very small area to somehow come up with some magic in. Is there artwork on MP3s? It's often said that old physical music media like records um, was much nicer because you had artwork and things like that. And especially looking at like the Joshua Tree cover, um, it is a brilliant piece of art. That's an amazing photograph. Um, even if you kind of ignore the band, it's still a great photograph of Nevada Desert, I think somewhere foreign, definitely not in the UK. Um, and yeah, it's nice to have those pieces of art, but usually they get all battered and bruised like this because that you use them, you, it'd be very rare for you to frame, a, frame that and keep it nice like art. Whereas if you have something on your iPod or phone, you have a really great little picture that lasts forever and looks, looks fantastic all the time. Like you see, I've just been listening to a track by Secret Archives of the Vatican, and you can just about see uh, Vince Millick's beautiful artwork for Remembering the Machine there on my phone. Um, and it is nice, I, I make sure all my music on my phone has um, has the artwork, so it, um, so it looks like that. I'm looking at the screen now, the only thing that doesn't have the artwork um, is a podcast that um, I have no control over, or it'd be really geeky to add. Um, artwork to every podcast I downloaded. So I actually feel that I experience more of the creative side of music, the graphical arty side um, of the music product now than I ever did when music was set up like this. And I never experienced music when it was set up like this because I'm not as old as it.
whole way that you get music now, being able to download it, I, I really like. I think the, the ability to download is great. The ability to take with you whatever you want and listen to it anywhere and be able to shuffle it and, and not to worry about do I want this tape or that tape or this CD or that CD, that's the real killer for me, the convenience of that. And I will admit as much as I feel like I shouldn't, I put up with MP3 quality stuff just because that way I can listen to what I want to hear. You can embed pictures in MP3s and indeed we do that, but uh, you know it's a, it's a very small picture and you can only do so much with it. It's not size that counts, it's what you do with it. Yeah. being able to download is if there's an album I want, I can get it. I don't have to go around six different record shops and end up ordering it from Amazon and wait in three weeks for it to turn up. You'd never have to listen to the same song twice. Um, there's so much new music available to any one of us on the internet. Um, you never have to listen to the same song twice. I think what's different these days uh, it still exists, but I don't quite know how you do it, is, is just that element of being surprised. Uh, when you flick through a rack in an old record shop, you might just find some strange album by some crazy named band, and you would buy it just because it looked interesting. Most online download stores, it's quite difficult to kind of browse and you've got a list of titles, but when you haven't got lots of sleeve notes to look at and maybe photographs on the back of an old album cover or whatever, you've got nothing much to go on other than the name of the tracks or the name of the album or the name of the artist and whatever label the download store has attached to it. And we know just from our own experience that uh, the genre labels that download stores put on tracks very often bear no resemblance whatsoever to what the music's like. easier to move music around these days because obviously it's stored on your iPod or your phone or your laptop or whatever. Um, back in the day I used to lug um, crates of vinyl around in heavy aluminium cases and um, yeah, hit my back. I'm working on video dance floor and working with Vince Lee on stuff for the secret archives of the Vatican. Um, we rely, I mean, we rely on digital distribution networks. Uh, for dance floor, we have a sole distributor who aggregates, I think is the right word, our music to different shops and websites to let people download it for money. Uh, for secret archives, uh, Vince uses a gazillion different ways of distributing the music digitally and some of those although they have a digital starting point they end up in a physical product um, and that's um, probably the future of physical recording media no longer will people necessarily go to a shop to buy it they'll probably just order a CD from the internet which we made on demand for them. <laughs> <laughs> 